and welcome to another video brought to you by KeepsakeCrafts.net and AllFreeJewelryMaking.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make this necklace strung on leather cord. It uses some different techniques than usually used on traditional jewelry with chain and jump rings. And it has this great adjustable closure. Stay tuned and I'll show you how easy it is to make it. So to make this necklace, the first thing you want to do is choose a focal bead that you like. This is a ceramic bead and this will be kind of the star player in my necklace. And then choose a couple of different shapes and materials of supporting beads. I've gone with these wooden ovals and also some copper metal beads in a couple of different shapes. It's good when you're designing a necklace to have a variety of shapes, a variety of materials that go together. This has kind of an earthy, bohemian feel. Also, I've chosen some beads that are plain background players. They will be spacers and help support the other beads, separate them, fill them out a bit. Actually, these black beads, both the smaller ones and the larger ones, come in strands. If you buy beads on a strand, like these ones, we're actually on the strand with these. Because I only got four of these on a strand. They're so big. And these kind of filled it out. You'll find them often if you buy beads that way. That there'll be other smaller beads that aren't nearly as interesting. But they certainly can be useful. The next thing you'll need, and the most important, is something to string your beads onto, and this is one millimeter leather cord. Make sure if you buy it in a package at the craft store that you pick up the package that says one millimeter and not two millimeter. The two millimeter is, well, twice as thick, and you will, you may find yourself very well gnashing your teeth trying to get beads onto two millimeter cord, ones that would slide onto one millimeter cord. And that's another thing to keep in mind when you're choosing your beads. You need to have a good size hole in these beads uh, so that the cord will go through. If these are nice and big, plenty of room for the cord. These smaller ones, I actually needed to use this tool. Now this is optional, but you might find it very helpful. This is a bead reamer, and I actually use this when I do glass lampwork beads. These are the very tiny diamonds in here and it helps clean out the insides of the beads. You have to be careful. If you push too hard, you will split your beads and ruin them. But you can spend a little time and you may, if you have a big enough, nearly big enough hole to begin with, you may be able to ream them out just enough to be able to get your cord on. When you cut your cord, I like to start with a yard of cord. This will give me a necklace that I can adjust anywhere from a choker down to a pretty long length. Also, the extra length will give me the opportunity to trim it off a few times because as we're stringing on beads, first of all, you want to cut it like I have here at an angle, but as we're stringing on beads, it does get softened up and starts to get a little squishy. And if that happens, just snip off a half an inch and go ahead and continue um, stringing on your beads. So before you get started, you'll want to take a look at what you've got. And this is kind of the fun part of making jewelry, is we'll lay out a design. Now, I'm, mine happens to be symmetrical here, but you certainly don't have to make yours symmetrical. You can put things with different colors and maybe just slight variation in size on either side. I think this is how I want it. But play with it a little bit. I like that. And then I'm going to put these little ones on the end. And that will give it a nice taper. So once you have your beads chosen, and this is a fun opportunity to go through the beads that you have in your collection and use up a few. You don't need many. You could see I only have two of each of the metal ones, one of the focal beads, you know, four of the wooden ones. But you can do whatever you like. You can use individuals. So once you have your beads laid out, you simply cut 
your cord, your one millimeter leather cord, on the diagonal and string them on. So I'm going to do that and I'll be back and show you. So now I've gone ahead and strung my beads onto my cord and I left off the three beads over here on purpose just to show you the difference that just these three smaller beads tapering off the design makes. It just looks a little bit more finished over here where on this side it ends kind of abruptly. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're designing, that it is nice to have that tapering off effect. So I'm going to go ahead and string on my other three little beads. And by the way, you'll notice that I did have to trim it once, even with just this short amount of beads. So don't be afraid. If it starts feeling kind of squishy and like it doesn't want to go through the holes, just lop off about a half an inch and keep on stringing. So I'll be back once I've finished my stringing. So now I've finished stringing on my beads to my necklace and all that remains is to make the knotted adjustable closure. And it's very simple to do. To make the knot on the left side, take the right piece, put it over the left and then under the left, over itself and under itself. That's all there is to it. Over, under, over, under. You can see I've just made a loop that this is going to go through. It's going to slide through. And then go ahead and pull this snug. Pull it pretty snug, but don't be Hercules. You can break this one millimeter cord. Oh, ask me how I know. I have done it. But just pull it snug so that that left side should slide right through it, but it's going to be stuck there. Next, we'll take the left side and repeat. Go over the right side and under the right side, over itself and under itself. It's important that you do it in this direction so that the knots slide smoothly. If you make your loop going the other way, if the pretzel, that kind of looks like a little pretzel, if the pretzel twists the other way, it won't slide as smoothly. So go ahead and pull that snug. Like I said, don't try to prove any feats of strength. Just pull it snug. And that's, that's it. The next thing I'm going to do is just cut these off. I usually cut them at a diagonal just because it looks nicer. Fairly close to the knot. And your necklace is done. To make it longer, pull those apart. Now, let me give you a warning. Do not pull so much that these knots come butting up against each other. You will be sorry. It will require fingernails and patience to pull them apart. So make sure that whenever you pull it to lengthen it, that you don't go uh, too far. I mean, it can be recovered, but it's a pain. And then to shorten the necklace, you just grasp the knots and pull. And there it is. And the, the closure will work easier the more you use it. And this is just a great technique. It's a lot easier than getting out jump rings and pliers and making loops and wire cutters. All you need is some cord, some beads with holes big enough for the cord to go through, and you can start designing and have yourself a great necklace in no time. I hope you've enjoyed this project. Thanks for watching. Here's another look at the necklace that we made today. Of course, pick out any beads that you like. Do your design and make it your own. Have fun. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out KeepsakeCraft.net for lots of crafting ideas, not just for jewelry, but we also have sewing pattern reviews and just about every craft that could catch someone's fancy. So thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.